Hey man, what a beautiful song. Thank you for that. Yeah, goosebumps. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hello, my church family. I hope everyone is doing great today. Before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath and for this chance for us to share your word and to feel your presence all around us and to remember your sacrifice for us. Lord, we come to you as humble servants, hungry for your word. Lord, we ask that you will help my lips to deliver this message, and we ask that our hearts may also be open to receive this message, not by our own understanding, but that, you may, that we may lean on your understanding, so that we may better know how to serve and do your will. We ask that we may gain knowledge and wisdom, and the wisdom to know how to use that knowledge. And Lord, we ask that we could better walk these steps that you have walked and imitate you. Lord, we ask that you will help us in all we do to better serve you and to love those around us, sharing compassion and empathy every step of the way. We love you, O Lord, and thank you for all you have done for us as we continue to praise you. We pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you all for being here today and for those also tuning in online. Thank you for choosing to walk this path with Jesus Christ. We all know sometimes it isn't easy, but the rewards are bountiful. Without the grace of God and his mercy, none of this, our lives, our families, or this time together, and our very salvation wouldn't even be possible. Family, any and every day that we can open our eyes and take another breath and share the love with those around us and witness his truth is a wonderful day. And praise the Lord for that. God is good all the time, family, am I right? But there's another truth. Sometimes, yes, sometimes, Satan, that not-so-great dragon, that dirty old serpent, who is also called the devil, can be a real punk. Can he, folks? I mean, here you'll be doing great, rolling along, feeling good, doing what you're supposed to do, checking all the boxes, and then, boom, out of left field, you get cracked with bad news, debt, a loss in the family, a sickness. Your car breaks down, you lose your job, or you run into troubles, and you think, what is going on? I'm doing everything right. I go to church. I go to work. I follow the rules I keep to myself. I think I'm doing good. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because Satan is a no-good, low-down, dirty old punk. There's no other way around it. Sometimes I say this, and people go, well, I didn't invite him in. I'm a Christian. I'm covered against his tricks. I know the truth and how to spot his lies. I'd never fall for that. Well, maybe you wouldn't directly invite him in, or maybe you did without knowing it, or maybe, just maybe, you are well aware of why you have fallen for the fogging of the truth, and he's used your own worldly understanding and made your heart hardened. You see, we can read the Bible and go to church and do devotionals and claim to be Christian until we're blue in the face, but our, if our hearts are not following and practicing God's love, or in tune with his commands, then what good is any of it? Matthew 7, verse 21 through 23 says, Let me get there, folks. <laughs> Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who breaks God's laws. Let me say this, my brothers and sisters. It is important to remember God's laws and to not only institute them into your mind, but actually live by them, follow them, show others through your actions or fruits that you love the Lord. Walking and talking how he did with soul winning as your main purpose. You can put on that upright pretend follower costume all you want, but if your heart is not God's, if we do not do his will, then none of it matters. We always have to stay on guard because that dirty old serpent Satan will come at you and I any way he wants. And even the most well-versed, most noble, honorable, even the very elect can fall for his traps. And no wonder. For even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14. 
A lot of people I say this to seem baffled or even chuckle it off and say, but I'm covered by the blood, saved by the grace. I know the Bible inside and out. I have faith. I know I'm a good person and I would never fall for Satan's lies. Some out there even say that Jesus did away with these laws or they use the age old excuses. Nobody's perfect. We all fall short. Sometimes we seem pretty sure of ourselves, don't we? As we come up with excuses why our hearts are a wreck or why we treat people the way that we do. Friends, these laws are called the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Guidelines, not the Ten Ideas or the Ten Recommendations. God wanted us to follow his laws forever, and he knew there would come a time when the generation at hand would either forget or try to forget. He knew some would find it too hard in part from the truth. Revelation 14, verse 12 says, Here is the call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. That is why many times it says over and over, not only to keep them, but also remember them. He also says, If you love me, you will keep my commands. He knew Satan would use our everyday worldly understanding, ideologies, the pleasures, fears, and thoughts to trick, tempt, trap, persuade, try, and even divide us. Stay with me here, family. We as the remnant church know at least to keep the fourth commandment. But even many of our own brothers and sisters have fallen for Satan's trickery and forgotten the other nine. We are not special. Anyone can say they're a Christian or a follower of God. But we all know words are only as good as the heart and actions of the body they come out of. Am I right? If one does not live by his commands, does not do good to those around does not love unconditionally or constantly tears down with a hardened heart, one cannot call themselves a follower of Christ or a true Christian. They just know some good doctrine, but don't practice it. They dress up nice for worship, but outside of them doors in everyday life, the true selfish person or colors come out. Some of the most well-educated, well-versed, well-rounded people in the Word of God have fallen hard and far from the truth. Some don't even recognize it, while others embrace it. Big churches and their leaders have fallen just as the small ones and the leaders have. No one is unsusceptible to Satan's lies. My brothers and sisters, some even think we're protected from Satan while we're in our very own church. But I am here to tell you, family, that he has his very own seat in the corner, and he knows the scripture better than you and I. He knows exactly who to pull and sway, tug or tempt, trick or deceive. He knows whose heart is not fully God's, who's been storing rotted fruits, and whose anger can be used against them. He knows who is living for this world and all the sin it has to offer. God's Remnant Church, page 32. For Satan is permitted to come in, and through his spacious deceptions and delusions, he leads those who are not learning of Christ's meekness and loneliness of heart to take a different line from the church and break up, if possible, the unity of the church. Men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. They claim that God has given them great light, but how do they act under its influence? Now, wait a minute, Brad. Are you saying I'm at fault? Are you calling me rotted? Are you saying I don't know Jesus or that I extinguished my light? That I invited Satan into my life? I don't like that serpent. I don't follow him or the things of the world. I follow God and I try to do his will. Well, that might be true. Or maybe not. God says that we need to do his will, follow his commands, and imitate him. Walking how he walked, talking how he talked. But if our tongues, hearts, and actions are just as bad as the wicked, if we don't come from among them in the world and set ourselves apart, how will anyone tell the difference? My friends, love is a big one. Who do you love? We can't just love the ones in our home or our family. Some even find that hard to do. We can't just love the ones that look like us, act like us, sound like us, do what we say or follow what we think. We can't just pick and choose who gets our love. We can't just love the ones on the right side of the border or the right color or who our politician or news channels tell us to. Jesus loved all, so we must love all, no matter how different, how off the wall, how wacky, how sinful, how lost we feel they may be. It is not our place to judge. It is our place to love. Everyone deserves to know and feel God's love. He even said to love our enemies. Are you loving? Are you falling for Satan's hate? Let me ask this family. Are you bearing false witness to or against your brothers and sisters or even your neighbors? 
spreading lies or gossip about them or calling them names for what they personally believe, feel, or follow, without even truly knowing them. Being a two-faced Christian is a sin. Are you doing the same against God? Claiming he is something or someone or doing something he is or is not and never would be? Are you claiming that he's a part of your own fit-in-a-box, made-up, selfish human idea or worldly power that you know he would never be a part or take a part in? Have you found yourself creating this so-called false god and worshiping this idol you've created? Are you worshiping Satan's worldly henchmen? No, we wouldn't do that, would we? Are you always honoring your parents, even though they may drive you nuts or maybe not agree with what you do or say? Maybe they have thoughts or opinions that are different than yours. Are you honoring them or despising them, turning away, arguing, cursing, or as the kids say, unfriending them? Are you falling for Satan's dishonor? Are you coveting at things you want or feel you need or see? Do you feel like I've worked so hard and I deserve it more than the lesser man or what you think or call lazy? And why don't I have that? Why are they giving it away to others who don't even work for it? Why isn't it me, 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 I, I, I? What about me? Are you falling for Satan's selfishness? But wait, family, there's more. Stay with me here. Forgiveness. Now there's a humdinger, am I right? Some get angry at folks they've never even met, never taken the time to get to know. Some get angry at folks they've, they've never even walked a mile in their shoes, and they couldn't fill even if they had to, but harbor, harbor anger against them because they were told to or thought they ought to. Are you falling for Satan's divisions? Matthew 7, verse 3 says, And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? But do not consider the plank in your own eye. How many of you can forgive someone right away, no matter what? How about right after they cut you off? This might be extreme, but if they strike you in the face or wrong you so terribly, even steal from you. I know it might sound harsh, but how about if they hurt a loved one beyond measure? Not many. Heck, I would even struggle with that one. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 10 through 11. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. Indeed, what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. Well, brand, 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 brand. That's a hard one. I have these anger problems, a temper, a short fuse. It's what our leaders, our friends, the people on TV are doing, so it's okay. It's what other Christians are doing, so God understands. He knows I'm a mess. I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. We all fall short. As a matter of fact, my brothers and sisters, I too have fallen susceptible to all these things. I'm not perfect. Do not let the smooth exterior fool you. <laughs> I've lived in the world for 30-something years, and at one time long ago, I walked on the head, edge of hell myself. I had a very sinful life that was filled with Satan's snares and traps. I've tripped up in many ways and many times for his tricks and led others to do the same. I was even locked in a cage with his demons and lost five years of my life at a time I called the Dark Ages. I have done many foolish things, watched and taken part in many dreadful things. I've believed many lies when I should have searched truth. I've hurt and caused pain to many people I should have helped, and I've been in places I never should have been. I've divided when I should have united. I've hated when I should have loved. I've even spread many seeds of rotted fruit, bared false witness, or even gossiped myself. To say the least, I've done things I surely regret. But I don't live in that world anymore. For 30-something years, yes, I was on the wrong side of the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up my childish ways. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Friends, family, brothers and sisters and loved ones, we are repeatedly told that following God will not be easy. Anyone saying this is either a liar or they really aren't sure what it looks and actually means to follow and walk this narrow path. The Bible says it will be a test of endurance, of grace, of patience, of self-control, and also of love. We have to be fully aware that Satan will try to deceive us. 
Great Controversy, page 594. The masses of the people turn away their ears from hearing the truth and are turned onto fables. The Apostle Paul declared, looking down to the last days, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. 2 Timothy 4.3. That time has fully come. The multitudes do not want Bible truth because it interferes with the desires of the sinful, world-loving heart. And Satan supplies the deceptions which they love. God definitely knows that Satan is a punk. And he's crafty, and he's lying, and he's deceitful. He definitely knows it's going to be hard. He told us the highway to hell is wide and everybody's going. But the gate to heaven is narrow and few will get through. God also knows we'll be tempted, tricked. He knows we'll be tried. He knows that we have a temper and he knows our heart and how tattered and sinful it can be because he not only made it, but he lived it. You see, my friends, we live in this world, but it's important not to live for this world. What do I mean for this world? Well, if you turn on the TV which I try to avoid this, <laughs> and you flip through the channels, you will probably, depending on what time of day, you'll probably see drinking, drug use, swearing, fornication, underage pregnancy, coveting, gossiping, cheating, lying, stealing, fighting, hating, dividing, finger pointing, lusting, scoffing, conspiracies, and that's just daytime television. That doesn't even include the internet, email, social media, videos, news media, or politicians that seem absolutely hell-bent on the demise of humankind as we know it. I say it all the time, Satan does not hide in the trees. He hangs on the screens. He doesn't need to tempt us with one piece of fruit when everywhere we look there are many deceitful pieces. Some even believe because they follow one worldly power versus the other, they have a leg up on others who don't. Family, family, Satan plays and tricks all sides of worldly powers. He is the leader of all worldly powers, and they are all sowers of rotten fruit, divisions, hate, misconceptions, fear-mongering, conspiracies, misinformation, and deceptionists of God's commands. 1 John 2, verse 3 through 6. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. And truth is not in him. But whomever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. My friends and family, we are not covered by a force field protecting us from all the world's nastiness and misconceptions. The trickeries or wrongs against us are our own ignorant thinking. We do not have a bit in our mouth that leads us around like a horse to keep us from doing bad or out of harm's way. We have free will to make bad choices or live righteously, think selfishly or love unconditionally, turn away and help or help others, witness to others and make disciples or keep God's love to ourselves. Sometimes it's going to get rough. And as we remember the resurrection this weekend and how Jesus went through the roughest and toughest of it all, he was whipped and beat spat on and cursed at. His clothes were ripped off him. Thorns were placed on his head. He was mocked at and hung on that cross for six hours. So that being said, we must pick up that cross as well sometimes. We must sometimes go through the worst of it. Sometimes we have to travel through what seems like a challenging, desolate wilderness to get to the promised land. But we can be rest assured that he is right there with us through it all, weeping when we weep. Rejoicing when we rejoice. Remember, trials bring patience. And patience brings endurance. And endurance brings character. But we have to be on guard, my family, and always remember that Satan is a punk. He was in the beginning and he will be in the end and that will always be. He is the ruler of this world. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. In their case, the God of this world was blind, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. A lot of people forget that. They forget Lucifer was cast out from heaven to this world. They forget he became Satan once he took up earth as his throne, when he stole it from Adam. They forget that each and every day that dirty old punk Satan roams around like a lion stalking his prey, walking all about it, up and down, to and fro. My brothers and sisters, we as the remnant church should know the truth. We should not be confused on the mark of the beast. 
We should not be so cold-hearted that we turn times of loving thy neighbor, times of helping those in need, times of helping those oppressed or down and out, or times of minor inconvenience into I, me, me, my rights, my, my, I. Stay with me, friends. We should know better than to support the very worldly beast powers and authorities that usher in falsehoods, divisions, or possibly even the dragon himself. We should know better than to turn our hallways and Sabbaths into gossip or misinformation corners. This is not their day, not their house of conspiracy. This is his house and his day. But as 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 2 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. I'll use this illustration of putting your hand on a hot stove. Yes, it'll hurt at first. But if you hold it there long enough, you will sear the nerve endings to where eventually you won't feel it anymore. Meaning things that are contrary to God's truth or contradictive to God's love after a while don't really bother the conscience anymore and become accepted as normal behavior. What we have recently gone through, my friends, these past years are only the beginning of the troubles and terror that will become and will come to us. It was a test run of how quick people can fall for Satan's hate, divisions, and lies. My brothers and sisters, because we choose to follow a gracious God, Satan will double down on his tactics. He gets more joy out of tricking us with worldly understanding, divisions, hate, politicians, chaos, calamity, pleasures, lust, temptations, trials, deceit, and fear. He knows humans can be ignorant and selfish, easily persuaded with worldly twists of our own thoughts. He knows all it takes is one seed of rotted misconception, and where our tongues will be off to spitting those seeds like we're eating watermelon. Ephesians 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Brothers and sisters, we have to guard our hearts, our minds, and even our tongues because Satan knows exactly how to get the half-hearted, the lukewarm, even doctrine fallen Christians to fall just as easily as the lost or the wicked. It doesn't matter how educated in theology or how righteous we may claim to be in the word of God. He knows the scripture better than the best of us. Manuscript releases 8, page 346 says, We are approaching the end of earth's history, and Satan is working as never before. He is striving to act as director of the Christian world with an intensity that is marvelous. He is working with his lying wonders. Satan is represented as walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. His desires to embrace the whole world in his confederacy, hiding his deformities under the garb of Christianity. He assumes the attributes of a Christian and claims to be Christ himself. Satan knows, family, he can sprinkle bits of the word on any worldly situation, slather it with a little one-sided selfish thinking, add just a little backwards truth topped off with a covenous cherry, and it'll be so hard to see the wolf tracks we'll think we're following the rest of the flock. Unaware, we are following a wolf in sheep's clothing. Please hear me, family. Satan does not want Jesus to get the credit. He'll use every thought, every hope, people we love, the screens we watch, the websites we search, and people we support, and even our very own stinking, thinking thoughts to lure us in. If we go through life choosing the lesser of two evils, it won't matter which one we choose because we're still choosing evil. Matthew 7, verse 16. By their fruits, you shall know them. We are known by our fruits, my brothers and sisters. So if the fruit is rotten, then it's just not good fruit. Meaning if it hurts, divides, misleads, oppresses, damages other brothers and sisters, it's just plain rotted fruit. And the spewer or planter of those seeds is of the enemy, not of God. Also, whatever seeds we allow to be planted or we sow ourselves will determine the fruit that will grow. Matthew 12, verse 33, make a good tree and its fruit will be good. Or make a bad tree and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. There's only one true leader. One kingdom, one governing power that has good, amazing, fulfilling, abundant fruit. Jesus and his kingdom are the only government we should ever care to hear about or follow. By planting his wonderful seeds, you will be known by his fruit. Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. 
Satan, that dirty old punk, he wants us to walk away from the Father and turn to his lies, turn to his worldly men for salvation. And most of the time, he's so sly, the sheep don't even realize they're being led to slaughter. Some actually believe they're doing the will of God. An author once wrote, If you dance with the devil, then you haven't got a clue. For you think you'll change the devil, but the devil changes you. But my brothers and sisters, we must remain strong. And let that punk know that we are not to be tried. We are not to be messed with because we are on guard. And we are ready for his antics and we know his tricks because we walk with the Lord and Savior. We stand with the one and only Son of God, the true Messiah. We must hold this line in this battle of good and evil and wear the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 6, 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as your shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And my brothers and sisters, there is only one solution. And his name is Jesus. There's only one answer. And his name is Jesus. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, the great I am, the antidote to our disease of sin that Satan has affected us with, and his name is Jesus. But it won't be easy. Real deal, follow all the rules, take up the cross, witnessing the truth, sharing his love, evangelizing every chance we get, walking this narrow path in his footsteps and doing the will of God. It's going to be hard. We have to change our thought process, the actions we take. The words we speak, the life we live, and the things that we associate with. We must, my brothers and sisters, we must trust in the Heavenly Father and His grace because He will take us places that we have never been. But if what you do and say is not full of His love, His mercy, hope, truth, compassion, empathy, or encouragement, then the point is being completely missed. My family, God is good and His love is great. His word is never ending and truly full of life. Now, wait a minute. Some might say, this all sounds a little, you know. But I mean, I, I, I walk with God, and I love some people, and I do for others when I can. I witness and evangelize when I feel like it. I help people who are down and out when I have time. I don't follow worldly things or choose the lesser of two evils. I have a right to do what I want. I don't watch that smut all the time. I think I give enough time to God and others when I feel I have time. I don't think I'm falling for that punk Satan's tricks, am I? Well, sometimes, family, we have to take a long, hard look in the mirror with our eyes and realize it's not about I. The whole kicker is here, and are you ready, fam? Stay with me, because I want to be clear. I don't want to lose any of you. None of it is about you or I. None of it is about you, yourself, me, me, my, oh, my, yes, I. None of it is about good old you or I, the old self-righteous. This is not the place for you. It's not about clout or a pat on the back or the glorification of self, numeral uno. Nope. It's not even about the fact that we can say, I'm a Christian. Then, well, what's it about? It's about others. It's about winning souls for the kingdom. It's about telling the world of his glory and discipling the truth. It's about spreading God's amazing love and good news to our brothers and sisters. Everywhere, all the time, evangelizing to the world. It's about the commission our Lord and Savior has given you and I. Witnessing the truth and walking the steps he walks and doing what he did. Loving unconditionally everyone with all their faults. We are all different and that's what makes us so special. All created in his image. 1 John 4, verses 7 through 8, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. 
God's word, his wonderful, powerful grace and mercy, his glory and never-ending love, the blessing of our Lord and Savior is meant to be shared. Going into the world, preaching the news, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are to speak life, truth, and love. We are the body, and it's time to start acting like it. It's time to start using those hands to heal and carry those who have fallen, lifting up our brothers and sisters of the world. It's time to use those mouths to preach, teach, and spread the words of wisdom instead of spinning seeds of rotted fruit. It's time to use those feet to walk as he walked, carrying the message to those whose hearts need his love. It's time to resurrect these dry bones and get that fire back inside of ourselves and start bringing life back through those doors. It is time to be that beacon of light on the hill that lights the path for others to see. My brothers and sisters, it's time to ask ourselves that age-old question. What would Jesus do? We are to imitate him. It's time to go above and beyond and not just ride the wave or keep the pews warm. He is our father, and it's time to do what he asks of us, what he commands us to do. Our mission is not dwelling in the world. It is what, or in worldly affairs, our whole purpose in this life is for him and the salvation of others, teaching them to repent, for time is of the essence. A friend of mine, John Lomacang, well, he doesn't know he's my friend yet, but... <laughs> But he put it like this, family, as real lovers of the truth of Jesus, true followers of the word, we should not care who is in or going to be in the White House. Our eyes should be on the right house, the kingdom in heaven, our father's mansion. My brothers and sisters, hear me. The only Biden we should mention in this house is the time we're Biden witnessing and waiting for Jesus. Stay with me, loved ones. I don't want to lose you. Please hear me. The only Trump we should ever care to hear is that final Trump calling us home on that final day. My church family, worldly powers and authorities, governments and principalities only operate because God allows them in their tiny speck of dust existence and then poof, they're gone. Our mission isn't to worry about them or fuel their empire of fear and divisions. We are to love one another as he first loved us. We are to be his children and show the rest of the world we are the ones Jesus was calling to be fishers of men. We are the ones he gave the great commission to. We are the ones he calls his disciples. I want to close my brothers and sisters with a story I wrote a while back. A grandfather and his grandson were walking along a beach. The sun was just coming up. The grandson, being troubled by the world and all the ups and downs, says to the grandpa, Grandpa, what's the point? Every day it's the same thing. You turn on the news, it's drama. You talk to people, it's drama. Life is constantly troubling and filled with nothingness but trials. What is the point? The grandfather looked out towards the sun glazing over the water and took it in for a moment. Grandson, Pick up that stone over there. Now, do you see that sun and the water and how it reflects like a continuation of all that wonder? Focus on that. Okay, says the grandson. Now, I want you to skip that stone across the water. So the grandson did what his grandfather asked, and he skipped. And as it skipped, his eyes followed it up and down as it bounced. Okay, it just skipped. What's your point, Grandpa? The grandfather shook his head and said, Grandson, you were too focused on that stone. The horizon in all its beauty is the world God gave us to care for. The stone was the abrupt challenges and trials, the ups and downs that the devil can throw at us. Grandson looks at Grandpa. Okay, that explained nothing. <laughs> the grandpa says, The beautiful horizon or the world and all its wonder and beauty, that is what God has given us. Sometimes it will have abrupt and powerful challenges or trials caused by the devil, filled with many different bounces and skips, ups and downs. Those ripples, wait, sorry, ups and downs, <laughs> but they don't last long. Your eyes were focused too much on those troubles. But what you didn't notice was the ripples in the water that came after the bounces and skips. Those ripples caused a difference, a change in the water as they got bigger and bigger. Those ripples or changes have to be us. God gave us this world and all the beauty in it, and sometimes that devil will shake it up. He'll cause problems, chaos, calamity, make us focus on ourselves. But it's our job, our mission to be that ripple, the change. The whole point, my grandson, is to not be so focused on the problems or ourselves that we miss the bigger picture. 
Sometimes in this crazy world, we have to be that change. Brothers and sisters, we needeth not be led in temptation, but delivered from the evil and filth of this world. We have to be the change and the love. Now listen here, family, because this is good. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 through 8. Some of you might know this by heart. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a banging gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy or can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardships that I, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it's not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Isn't that good, my family? It continues to go on and say, and now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Love is the key. Love is the weapon against that punk Satan. Love is what makes you and I different from the wicked. It's our secret weapon. Love is the reason our Savior endured being laughed at, ridiculed, betrayed. Love is why he carried that cross miles through a city, being whipped and spat on, cursed at. Love is why he hung on that cross while they denied him. Love is why he resurrected on the third day and then gave us the great commission. Love is the reason he ascended to heaven. Love is the reason he pleads our case. Love is the reason he convicts us and causes us to repent. Love can get us out of the clutch of Satan and into the arms of Jesus. We can love because he first loved us. Jesus is the only way. Then and now. He is the same yesterday as he is today. He is the one who told us, fear not, for I am with you always. The only answer is Jesus. My brothers and sisters, my family and friends, my loved ones, Jesus is waiting, and soon he will be here to take us home. Are you ready to walk with him? Are you willing to talk to him? Are you willing to do as he would do? Are you willing to imitate and act like he would? Are you willing to love each and every day? He so loved the world. My brothers and sisters, I ask as we remember this weekend of resurrection and all Jesus has done along with all the painful sacrifices he made for us to teach us of his love. Who is ready to be more like Jesus? If you're looking for somebody you can talk to When the heartache and the troubles will overcome you There's a man you can count on That you can put your problems on You've got questions You need direction And arms will hold you for all eternity Look no further there's no other for a lover, he's an understander. Jesus is the answer. You're out there wondering what got you into. Such a big old mess And you've been feeling So undeserving Love forgiveness But there's 
a man king upon a throne that lets you know you're not alone you've got questions you need direction and arms that hold you for all eternity look no further there's no other he's an anchor he's God's right hand Jesus is the answer sometimes his life is a no-win situation get down on your knees and he'll be right there waiting got questions, you need direction, and arms to hold you for all eternity. Look no further, cause there's no other. He's a lover, he's an understander. He's an anchor. He's God's right hander. Jesus is the answer. Oh, Jesus is the answer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we know we can come to you broken down, lost, afraid, and completely torn and bruised. But only like a father can you re rescue us, clean us up, and save us from the pit of despair. Lord, we thank you for knocking on that door, and we thank you for continuously blessing us day after day, always giving us chance after chance to make today better than yesterday. Lord, we don't need to know anyone's heart, for only you know what they need and feel, and how their prayers shall be answered. We thank you for blessing us with your word to not only use as a building block in our life, but to also take to the world and share with others that need you and your love. Lord, we ask you, please guard our hearts and lift up our infirmities, keeping our lips from sowing tears and use us for wonderful fruit that can be spread throughout the world. Father God, we thank you for being so merciful, so forgiving, and Lord, O oh precious, glorious King, we love all you do and continue to do for us. Father God, our Lord in heaven, we ask and pray you continue to blanket those who need extra love, hope, mercy in their life. And we pray that you will wrap them in your arms and keep them safe from what torments them. We pray those around the world who need a hedge of protection will be protected by you, that you will lift up their prayers like only you can. You are the good physician, and only you can heal what needs to be healed. Lord, please keep our minds from leaning on our own worldly understanding and sinful nature. Please protect us from Satan's snares and keep us out of his traps and away from his tricks. And please, Lord, we ask that you will always help us to better understand your word through your understanding, to gain wisdom and knowledge as you see fit, to better walk in your footsteps, witnessing and discipling, sharing your love and truth. Lord, we thank you for all you do and continue to do. And we pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters. Show compassion to one another, your neighbors, your brothers and sisters, even your enemies. And enjoy this day, for this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I love you, and God bless.